What's going on guys, Russell here with IDKO2 and today we are here with my Monoprice Select Mini V1 1. I've used it for a few months now and it's been fantastic, huge thumbs up to that. If you want to hear more about my experience and my thoughts on this printer, let me know. I'd be happy to do something uh, a little bit later, but today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing a couple of things about it. Actually, just, just one thing about it actually. It only has one fan. Um, and this fan is rather small, it's a 30 millimeter fan, um, and it, it's rather annoying. Now, I won't be able to fix the annoying bit. Uh, as you can see, I've actually taken out most of the screws already. There's only one left in here. It doesn't cool very well either. The main, the main function of this fan is to cool uh, the hot end here, so it doesn't get too hot. And then the part uh, and the nozzle, which is, if we can focus, right there. Um, so th this shroud, actually, I'm just gonna, I can kind of pop it off. Oh, that's sharp. Oh, I lost it. One second. Found it. It's funny how springs do that. They, they spring and fly away. So this shroud here, as you can see, um, it, it, it's all right. The shroud from the one fan opens up and then this portion cools the block here. And then this portion is a portion designed to cool the nozzle. Now, it, it works all right, it's not bad, but for longer gaps and for, I guess, uh, more detailed areas of prints, the cooling just isn't fantastic. So I'm gonna add a second fan. And the way I'm gonna do that is by creating a new shroud and adding a fan to it. So this is the new shroud. Uh, now, it's not my original design. Uh, I pulled the, the original design off Thingiverse and I'll link it down in the description below so you can check it out there. But I did remix it. Now the original design had this bottom portion. It sort of came all the way around and there was just like a little hole in the bottom, but that actually didn't fit around the hot end. So the way this works is it, it fits, fits nicely on either side of the hot end. And then you can see I've added this 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter knock to a fan. Uh, it is a 12 volt, uh, I think they call this the FLX series fan. And this 30 millimeter fan will be able to sit right on top here. Uh, I also modified the hole diameters a little bit. So these holes up here, you'll see later that I can just use the stock screws that this fan came with to then set it up here. Um, and uh, oh, this spacer is another thing that I changed from the original file. Uh, this spacer allows it to sit right on top of this heat sink to then have it sit at just the right height where the bottom face of this is just in line or slightly um, above the hot end so that it doesn't interact or interfere with the bed or anything else you're printing. Um, so I'll show you more about how it's uh, finally assembled in just a second. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to unscrew this fan and then I'll, I'll throw this shroud on here just to show you uh, what it's gonna look like. So the new shroud is on. You can kind of see uh, how it's going to sit. There's the new fan out here. Uh, and then the old fan is still wired up. Uh, it's just sitting over here. Um, this fan is going to sit right on top, just like that. And uh, I'm going to use the original screws to mount it. So they go in here and then they screw in like that. <coughs> um, but now you can see that if I were to sort of lay this ooh, just in line, you can kind of just see uh, the nozzle peeking through right there, uh, which means it is lower than the shroud itself. But now you can see that the shroud is sort of fully surrounding that hot end, making it nice and uh, and cool. So hopefully that'll help with uh, with the cooling of the of the extruded bit. So now I'm going to screw everything in. You can see that I have this super janky mounted with just wire ties at, at three, not even four corners. But that's because that these holes in the back aren't quite big enough for the screws or the rubber mounts. Uh, so I'm gonna see uh, how that works out. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm just gonna put those screws in. Awesome, so I got these screws in, the fan is mounted and uh, it looks fantastic. Get it? Fantastic. Anyway, so, and uh, that's it guys. That's uh, that, that's the way it is. So you can uh, give me a thumbs up uh, if you liked it. Th wait, 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 a, wait a second. What is this? Where does this, where does this plug into? Where does this plug into that, 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 that doesn't work. It doesn't, oh no. <sighs> All right, so we're gonna see what we're gonna have to do with this. Um, ideally what's gonna happen is I'm going to cut the wire off and then I'm going to cut these wires from this fan because they're both 12 volts. I'm wondering 
if there's enough current in here to drive both fans at the same time because I don't want this one on all the time. All the forums that I was reading was like, oh, just plug this one, just solder it directly into the motherboard, which is down in this part of the unit. Just solder that directly so it always stays on. I don't want that, because it's annoying. It's one of the reasons I want to swap it out in the first place, but I can't, because Noctua doesn't have a 30 millimeter fan. Um, so what's gonna happen is I'm going to try and splice this in parallel with this one to the original 12 volt leads. So, initiate the time lapse. All right, so here we go. Uh, I have the old fan lead stripped out here. You could just barely see them there. Um, this is the old fan, I cut the wire back. I'm gonna strip that in a second. I cut this wire in half, which really killed me to do because it's a nice cord. Um, so I have my multimeter out here now and I have my red and black leads. I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand. Uh, so I'm going to power on the unit uh, and then turn the hot end on uh, to the point where uh, here, I'm going to set my turret just to like 100 degrees um or so uh and then uh once it gets to around 100 i'm just going to measure the voltage up here to make sure it is 12 volts um and then uh that will sort of tell me whether or not that this will be able to power those two fans uh, i'll also be measuring the uh, the amperage um, as you can see it's just on voltage now uh, we're probably going to be getting close. I'm just going to see if I can put this on a tripod, maybe. Uh, our lead is at about 100 degrees. I don't know if you can see that just barely. It's like 107. Oh, hold on. Let's see. Maybe if I can do this. Yeah, there we go. There. So you can see that the temperature is just about 100 degrees there. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so it's 103. You can tell the volts. Uh, and if I do this... Oops. Interesting, so not quite 12 volts. So we can do a, a, a rough wiring in and then uh, see if that, if we can basically do a dry test. We're gonna do a dry test and see if this power lead can power both of these fans, even though they're both 12 volts, I don't know. Maybe they're only supposed to spin at 10 twelfths of their final speed. Who knows? Um, so yeah, so uh, here we go, time-lapse number two. Also, get a better size stripper. Um, I mine mine is cheap. It was like five bucks. It only goes up to eighteen gauge. Get one that goes goes even higher. I think these are twenty or twenty four gauge. And here we are, I have the red lead powered up to both of the red leads on the fan, and the black lead powered up to both of the black feeds on the fans over here, so hopefully this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. Yeah, this was unplugged, not just turned off, but unplugged, because you never know how reliable switches can be. Um, switches, am I right? Okay, so here we are powering up, and I'm just going to do a quick... Oops. Monitor. Extrude. No, we're just going to go to like a hundred. There we go. And all we're going to do is we're going to watch and wait. Oh no, this no good. Because now the top one is spinning, but the bottom one is not. Why isn't that spinning? So it appears I have figured it out. Uh, when it comes to a hundred degrees, remember how I said it wasn't exactly 12 volts, but hopefully it was enough to drive it. Well, it's not exactly 12 volts and it's just not enough to drive it because it's, uh, I'm gonna guess, a uh, higher amperage, higher impedance. So we're gonna have to open this thing up and then find a 12 volt spot on the motherboard. And then this one will be on running the whole time. Hopefully, we'll see how it goes.
So I'm just going to do a quick rundown. I solder all everything together. I just haven't cleaned it up yet, so I'm going to close it up next. But a quick test. Uh, the printer is on, the fan is running, and it is moving some air. Um, I can really, really feel it down at the bottom, which is awesome because that's what I wanted. That'll be that. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, so I'm going to finish heat shrinking and all the rest of it. Now, just to, just to sort of check, we're going to go back to this. And we're just going to set it to 100 or so and then wait till it heats up. And then we're going to see at what point the upper fan turns on. There we go. That's awesome. All right, and there we have a dual fan cooling solution for your MP Mini. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna finish cleaning up and then we can uh, wrap this up. And there we go, it is all done. I put the shroud back on, tightened up all the screws, and the best part is I didn't have anything left over. So thumbs up for me. Also thumbs up if you liked this video. Uh, I will be doing a test print, uh, probably just like the calibration cube or cat or something uh, just to sort of test the new abilities of what this setup will do just sort of without messing with anything else um, if you guys uh, want I will have the link for this uh, Thingiverse file in the description below also for this fan uh, this is the 40 by 20 millimeter one I will also have the 40 by 10 millimeter one in the description below so check that out uh, also check out my last couple of videos uh, it was a similar kind of DIY thing um, where I designed uh, you can just barely see it that phone stand and I would show you what it does except I'm filming on my phone so yeah, but all it is, it's a phone stand with a wireless charger in it. And just get that out of here. And then the phone, the phone sits right there and it charges. It's really, really cool. So you can check that out in my last, uh, my last video. I'll have it linked uh, up in the corner. Uh, and the last one, what was the other thing that I printed? Oh man, I can't remember. Oh, oh, I know now. I remember this. Oh, hold on. Haha, uh -huh. this. This was a shock mount. So the 3D printer has definitely been coming in handy. I will have several other projects sort of down the pipeline. And one of them includes one of these things. Ooh, if you guys know what this is, comment down below. Uh, and maybe you guys can figure out what the heck I am trying to do. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for this. This is coming up relatively soon. And uh, for more similar content, don't forget to subscribe down in that bottom corner if you haven't already, if I've earned it. Toss a like on this video if you liked what you saw and you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below for any future ideas on the video and follow me up on any of the social media over in that corner over there. Thanks for tuning in. I had a good time. Uh, hopefully this, uh, this works out okay. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.